Okay, we're going to solve this differential equation. So this is a linear differential equation with constant coefficients, and it's non-homogeneous because the right-hand side is not equal to zero. So the final answer to this DE is going to be of the form y equals y sub c plus y sub p. So we'll start first by finding y sub c. So to find y sub c, we assume that the differential equation is equal to zero. So we start by finding what's called the characteristic equation. So because we have a second derivative, we write down m squared plus, and then for y, that just becomes 4. That's really the zeroth derivative, so it's m to the 0. And here, this is equal to 0. Now we can subtract 4 from both sides. That gives us m squared equals negative 4. And we can take the square root. And so we get m equals uh, plus or minus 2y. So recall that when you have complex conjugates, you want to think of it as 0 plus or minus 2i. And the form is alpha plus or minus beta i. So you see here that alpha is 0 and beta is 2. And the formula, I'll refresh your memory, for y sub c is c1 e to the alpha x. I know I'm writing small on purpose. Cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. So plugging everything in, so alpha is 0, so e to the 0 is 1, so we just get c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x. So, so far, this problem is pretty straightforward so far. I'm pretty sure this problem is ridiculously messy, so that's why I'm writing so small. I haven't done this problem in a long time, but pretty sure it's messy. Okay, so now that we have yc, we have to focus on yp. So first we have to find the form of yp. So for the form of yp, I like to do it in steps. So I like to make an initial guess. And then below it here, I'll put the modified guess, if necessary. So here's how it works. For the initial guess, you only look at the right-hand side of your differential equation. So we have a sine 2x. So because we have a sine, we know that our initial guess has to have a sine and a cosine. So if you have a sine or a cosine, your initial always has to have both. So we have 7 sine 2x. That means our initial guess has to be a sine 2x plus b cosine 2x. Okay, that will be our initial guess based solely on what's here, what you see here on the uh, right-hand side of the DE. So now we have to look and see if there is repetition. So is the repetition between our initial guess and between um, the terms of yc. And there is, right? We have a sine 2x and a cosine 2x. So what we do is we have to multiply by x to eliminate the repetition. So we have ax sine 2x plus bx cosine 2x. So that looks good. That's going to be our modified guess, right? We had to multiply by x because this repeats with this, and then cosine repeats with, with this. All right, not so bad, actually, so far. So now uh, we have to find yp. So what does that mean? Well, we basically have to plug it into our de. So that means that we have to take the derivative of this thing twice. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. I, I think I'm going to come down here because I feel like I might not have room. So I'm going to write yp down again. So yp is equal to ax sine 2x plus bx cosine 2x. And so we have to take the derivative twice because we have to plug it into this. So let's find the derivative. So yp prime. So we're going to use the product rule. So it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of the first piece is a times the second piece, which is sine 2x.
plus the first piece, which is ax, times the derivative of the second piece. So the derivative of sine is cosine, but then we're also going to get a 2 from the chain rule. So it'll be cosine 2x times 2. Let's just check that. The derivative of ax is a times the second plus the first. Derivative of the second. Yep, looks good. Plus, this is the first, this is the second. So the derivative of the first is b times the second plus the first, which is bx, times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So here it's negative sine 2x, chain rule times 2. So that would be the derivative of the second. Let me just check it briefly. The derivative of bx is b times the second plus the first, which is bx, times the derivative of the second, right? The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and we have our chain rule, so life is good. Let's go ahead and just hope that we can clean this up. I don't know uh, if we can. I don't think so. <laughs> so this is a sine 2x. Let's just clean it up a little bit, maybe. Um, and then we have, I'm going to put this 2 in the front because it's bothering me. So plus 2ax cosine 2x. Yep, problem is pretty ridiculous. Plus <laughs> good times plus b cosine 2x. And then minus 2bx. These problems are just long. Yep. All right. Now we got to take the derivative of this. So let's do it. So, um, so yp double prime. So let's see here. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So we're just going to get uh, cosine 2x times 2 from the chain rule. So I'm going to do 2a cosine 2x just to save one little step there. Although it probably didn't matter, I would have had to clean it up anyways. So that looks okay. This is the first, this is the second, so we'll use the product rule. So plus the derivative of the first, which is 2a, times the second, plus the first, which is 2ax, times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we get negative sine 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. So let's just check that. So the derivative of the first is 2a times the second plus the first derivative of the second. Yep. Um, this derivative here, the derivative of cosine 2x, is going to be minus sine 2x times 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as minus 2b sine 2x. Okay, just skipping a step here. So it's really minus sine 2x times 2, chain rule. So I just put the minus 2 in the front. Um, this piece here is a little bit nasty. Uh, I'm going to leave the minus outside. You could do it all at once, but let me just factor out the negative 1 then do it with this. Derivative of the first times the derivative of the second. Let's do it. Derivative of the first is 2b times the second, okay, uh, plus the first, which is 2bx, times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of sine is cosine, so we get cosine 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Wow. Okay. So let's really hope this cleans up. So let's see. Yp double prime. Okay. So, oh, oh, look at this. It's right in my face. Look, 2a cosine 2x, 2a cosine 2. I didn't even see that. You know, I'm just so focused on not messing up. This is 4a cosine 2x. Oh, there is some good in the world. <laughs> So that's really good. Um, here, I'm just going to distribute this, this negative 2 here with this 2. And that will give us negative 4ax um, sine 2x. And then we have minus 2b sine 2x. And then distribute this negative here. So minus, oh, look at that, minus 2b. I should have seen it. <laughs> sine 2x. And then this one's going to be minus 4bx, right? Because we're distributing the negative 1. So minus 4bx um, cosine 2x. I feel like this simplifies even more, right? We can, we can combine these, these two middle terms here, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So yp double prime is 4a cosine 2x 
minus 4ax sine 2x and then minus uh, 4b sine 2x and then minus 4bx cosine 2x. What an epic problem. Just epic. Okay, so now <laughs> we have to plug this into the differential equation. So let me let me go up and look here. So it's, whoops, y double prime plus 4y equals 7 sine 2x. Okay, so I'm going to write that in a different color here. So we have y double prime plus 4y equals 7 sine 2x. Let me just double check that that's our DE. So let me just go back up. There it is, right there. Y double prime plus 4y equals 7 sine 2x. Okay, so we're going to plug it into the DE, plug all this stuff in. So we're basically just taking this one right here, and we're plugging that in to this. So I'm just going to write it again, okay? So, so 4a, it's actually not so bad, I hope. <laughs> Cosine 2x minus 4ax sine 2x minus 4b sine 2x minus 4bx cosine 2x. Yeah, this is not the problem I was thinking of, um, but it's still really messy. I, I did not expect it to work out this way. I thought this was a different problem. This is pretty tough, though. Uh, plus 4y. So y is up here. So I'm just going to distribute the 4. So plus 4ax sine 2x plus 4bx cosine 2x and that's equal to 7 sine 2x. Alright, does anything simplify here? Um, oh, look at this. Negative 4ax sine 2x 4ax sine 2x negative 4bx cosine 2x Oh, it just makes me feel like we're doing it right. Such a good feeling. So 4a cosine 2x. Oh, I love this problem now. <laughs> so, yeah, 4b sine 2x. Awesome. And this is equal to, look at that. I mean, who would have thunk? That's not really a word. Who would have thunk? Who would have thought that it would clean up so nicely? All right, so now we're going to equate coefficients. So, um... Let's look at the, let's start with the cosine 2x terms. So on the left-hand side, the coefficient of cosine 2x is 4a. On the right-hand side, you say it's not there. You're right, it's not. It's really 0 times cosine 2x. So it's really 0. So you set 4a equal to 0. So that means that a is equal to 0. Yay! What about uh, sine 2x terms? Sine 2x terms. On the left-hand side, the coefficient of sine 2x is negative 4b. All right, it's right here, negative 4b. On the right-hand side, it's 7. So negative 4b is equal to 7. So b is equal to negative 7 fourths. Good stuff. So now we have a and b. That felt so, uh, I, I don't know what the word is, but it didn't anticlimactic. I thought it was going to be much more intense. Um, so yp I already forgot what it was. It's, uh, let me go back up and look. Yeah, it's AX sine 2X. So it was AX sine 2X plus, I think it was BX cosine 2X. Yeah, that was YP. And so A is 0, so YP is just going to be negative 7 fourths X cosine 2X. Wow, what a lot of work for YP. I mean, that's like the bulk of the problem. And then y sub c, I forgot what it was. I'll write it down here. y sub c, I believe, was c1. I think it was like c1 sine 2x. Let me go back up. c1 cosine 2x. So it was c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x. That was uh, yc. So the final answer is y equals yc plus yp. So you just add them up. So, you just, so c1 cosine 2x plus uh, c2 sine 2x plus, oh, not plus, sorry, minus 7 fourths x cosine 2x. It's plus, but it's plus minus, so you can just put minus. 
And so that should be the final answer to this differential equation. It took 15 minutes. Wow. So long problems, right? These problems are very, very long. Uh, but once you can do these on your own, you got it. It's like riding a bike, except you can't get hurt. So it's great. Good stuff. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. Take care.